because this is an interesting in-between stream of deals. Should you upgrade your computer now or should you wait for the new stuff to come out? Zen 5 is coming out soon. <laughs> Zen 5 is due out this summer, June, July. There was actually just a briefing in China yesterday, I believe, that was not supposed to be public, but the slides were leaked anyway, showing some Zen 5 details. Now, very, very little actual detail of the chip was provided, but there are AMD slides. Dr. Lisa Su was there and Zen 5 and summer 2024. So we might be three, four months away from that. So for everybody watching this going, tell me all about the AM5 I should build right now. Nope. No, we are too close to Zen 5 at this point. I mean, I honestly, the time to buy AM5 or Zen 4 has passed. If you were gonna do that Prime Day last year, Black Friday, there were deals last year, that was the time to do it. Now just wait for Zen 5 and for that to come out. We do have some Intel deals today. Now Intel's replacement chip, the 15th gen, which won't be called 15th gen because yeah. Intel's doing a reset, it's gonna be Intel Core Ultra 2nd gen. Yeah, because technically the first gen was this year with Meteor Lake and then, but it's not really, it was mobile. Error? No, this fall is Arrow Lake. Oh, I mean. Meteor, um, mobile Meteor Lake launched oh, this. Mo yeah, mobile. But they called that Core Ultra. And so this way they can launch a desktop chip that's second gen, because nobody wants to buy first gen. <sighs> it's gonna be confusing, but regardless, the next thing from Intel is coming probably October. So it is currently March. It is. March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. No, it's really April, but whatever. Okay, we're nine-ish, nine and a half months away. If you need an upgrade, yeah, you could wait. But if you plan on Intel, that's long enough. Yeah, okay, sure. Especially with the price available today. The price is pretty impressive. Do you like a good price? Oh, no, it's just reading Tom Core Ultra Super TI Second Gen Duper Whooper. Buy Windows 10 Professional for $15, activate instantly online with Microsoft, and keep it forever. Don't pay full price. Get the best deal from our sponsor, URCD Keys, using our link in the video description below. Full details on how this amazing deal works at the end of the video. We have a $400 upgrade option and an $850 upgrade option. Now this is entirely focused on people who have existing computers who need an upgrade. So this is not about full new builds, which is a separate conversation. We're just talking about upgrades. There is a place here for different types of users. Some of you watching us have very old machines, an i5 2500K or i7 2600K from 2011. I know Sandy Bridge was great, but that was in fact 13 years ago. Titanic has left the dock. <laughs> the ship has sailed. It has crossed the ocean and sunk. Thank you, MT Coiner. We'll get back to you in a minute. Um, if you have an FX 6300 or 8300, if you have an i5 4440 or 4570K or an i7 4770K or a 7700K or even an i7 8700K, not a 9900K. If you have a 9900K and you've waited this long, wait nine more months. But an 8700K or older. Now, Ryzen's are an interesting thing. If you have a first gen Ryzen or second gen Ryzen, Zen, 4, uh, Zen 3 drop in upgrades make a lot of sense. I would not take a 2700X and replace it with what we're covering today. I would put a 5700X and call it a day for, for the next two years. If you've been living with a, a 1000 or 2000 series Ryzen chip, a drop in upgrade is absolutely your best option. It is not as fast as what we're about to talk about today. In fact, the $400 option today is a motherboard, RAM, and CPU for 400 bucks. It is faster in all respects to a 5700X, okay. bar none. But a 5700X is a five minute drop in upgrade to a 2700X. And you put all the links down below, right? Yes, for what we're talking about today. The 5700X isn't there, but 
It's not hard enough to find those. So this is for people who have some system where they need a motherboard, a CPU, and RAM. So these are new builds? Upgrades. These are upgrades. I. It's the wrong time to build a completely new machine. Okay. Wait a few months. Gotcha. Or you should have done it last... There are time periods where building a new machine is a really good deal, and then there's time periods which aren't. Correct. We are in the in-between yeah. time. This is a lousy time to be building an all-new machine. But let's say one of our viewers, for example, has either an i7-8700K or an FX8300 or something like that. Right. They've got a reasonably decent case. They've got a reasonably decent power supply. Could be, could be 550, 650, 750. Okay. They've got a couple of SSDs, some storage... Maybe they want to buy another SSD. Maybe they don't. They've got a graphics card. Maybe they bought a graphics card last year. And now they're ready to replace their older CPU because they discovered putting a 4070 on an FX8300 <laughs> is a really stupid idea. <laughs> it is. Whoopsie. Um, this gives you a functional set that you can drop into that existing case. Mm -hmm. Now, we talk about new builds all day long, but not everybody has two grand all at once to do a new build. It's true. A lot of people have $400. And if you have a five, seven, nine, or gasp, 13-year-old Sandy Bridge, mm. holy crap. You know, maybe the reason they've got that 13-year-old i7-2600K, goat in its day, but that day has passed. Just, just the reason they're like still on it is they don't have a lot of money. That's not a crime. We've all been there, I understand. 400 bucks might be something they could fit in their budget, but 850 is not. There you go. Now, the 850 option is better. Surprise, surprise. The more expensive option is nicer. <laughs> yeah, like what Peter said. Aw, thanks, Peter. Um, so, that's the gist of what we're talking about. How do you like my summary? Oh, a bit long-winded, but yeah, you... The, the Have long, you not met me? You had 20 years ago. <laughs> long and short, you got a $400 build, an 850 build. Pick one. The $400 upgrade option features... Da -na -na -na, the i7-12700KF. Eight P cores, four E cores... Up to 5 gigahertz unlocked LGA 1700. Woohoo! $200. $200 for an i7. Now, granted, this is two generations old. The 14th gen is out currently, so it's a little bit slower and not quite as nice as the newest 14th gen chips. But again, if you are on a 5, 7, 9, or 13 year old CPU, this will blow your mind. If you come from an FX6300 or an i5-4440 or a... You should have the CPU monkey pulled up so that you can show them. They like to see things. They like to see things? Uh -huh. We're getting a monkey? <laughs> oh my gosh. So this will blow your mind. 200 bucks gets you a very nice CPU. And you know what else is nice about this? Despite the 125 watts you see here... Unless you overclock it, it really doesn't use that much power. We are streaming on this CPU right now. You guys can't see it, but the streaming computer sitting over off to the side by the wall there is an, i5, is an i7-12700K. It has a single fan Scythe Mugen 5 basic tower cooler installed on it. How quiet is that down there? Silent. How much heat comes out of that box? Can you put one of these in the kids? Sure. Make them silent. Oh, the children themselves. I thought you meant their computers. <laughs> oh, can we install? Um, sadly, no. no. Mm. So you don't need as much cooling for this. It really doesn't pull as much sure. power as people. I, I, in fact, I get these comments all the time. People go, oh, why would I buy Intel? It uses 5,000 watts of power. No, it doesn't. Um, it's, it's pretty nice. So an inexpensive cooler will work. For motherboards, we have an interesting option today. Oh. Now, it's not the fanciest motherboard. Now, we just posted a video talking about are B boards good, yes or no. <laughs> and I gave a big, long-winded speech about how you should buy a nice motherboard. Yes, you did. But context matters. When I was matters. When I was making that speech, I was talking about new builds in the two dollars to $3,000 price range. 
Yeah, this is not if you've got twenty five hundred dollars to do an all new build, don't save fifty or a hundred bucks on the motherboard. Don't be cheap. But if you are upgrading because you don't have the money, I respect that. This is a perfectly fine option. So many people who watch that video must be like, mm -hmm. "How can he say two different things?" Because context matters. Nuance matters. Nuance. We have an Asrock Z six ninety M PG Riptide. And it's one hundred and ten dollars. One hundred and ten bucks. It's a micro ATX board. It's not flashy or fancy. It's a DDR five board. It's a DDR five, but it, it's time for DDR five. The price difference is pizza. Thirteen phase power. Pizza. And if you look at the actual board itself, four RAM slots. It's got uh, a total of. Uh, it's got eight plus four on the power. It's got USB Type C front panel. It's got two X sixteen expansion slots plus a one X slot. It's got multiple NVMe slots. It's got a place to add Wi-Fi. If you look at the IO shield, it has Type-C, integrated graphics. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven USB 3.0 ports plus a Type-C port. It's not fancy, but again, this is for people. Bucks. It's a hundred bucks. It's a Z board for a hundred bucks. If money's tight, if you need a cheaper option to blow away your five, seven, nine, or 13 year old computer, 13 year old, yeah. I kid you not. No, we have viewers who still have those things. I know. I'm watching him in chat. The performance gap here is nuts. And this is a DDR5 board. And speaking of DDR5. Oh, uh, here we go. We got the uh, Team Group T Force Vulcan DDR5, 32 gigs of 6,000 for 100 bucks. You can get cheaper DDR5, and yes, there are DDR4 board boards you can use, but if you have to buy RAM anyway, especially if you're coming from a system with DDR3, you have to buy RAM anyway. Now, for those of you watching who have a 7700K or an 8700K, and you already own DDR4, okay, I would actually repurpose your DDR4 and buy a DDR4 board, board. in that case. Yeah. But that's the exception to the rule. I wouldn't buy a new DDR4. I, it's, you'll save 30 bucks. It's, no. Because DDR5 will be around for a while. Yeah. So whatever you buy for this, you potentially can just move into your next machine and it's faster and it's what it was designed for. So, exactly. so $99. So basically you've got 100 bucks for the RAM and 100 bucks for the board and 200 bucks for the CPU. Mm -hmm. $400. 400 bucks. You can either repurpose your existing cooler, although you may need a mount. Many of the good cooler manufacturers will either provide you a free um, mount adapter or some of them will sell them for like five or seven dollars and you can reuse your existing cooler. If you don't have an NVMe drive, those have gotten really yeah, cheap. You can one always of buy one of those, but nothing says you can't keep using your SATA SSD. So 400 bucks gets you a lot of performance and you brought up CPU Monkey. One of the things I like about CPU Monkey is it generates charts that are really easy to see. If one of our lovely viewers has one of those 13 year old 2600Ks, here is an i7 2600K versus a 12700KF. Needless to say, these aren't even in the same ballpark. If we scroll all the way down to average performance, um. <laughs> Get out of bed. No, I don't want to. Okay, then. It's three times the single core and about six times a the multi A the gazillion multi times the multi core. Yes, on the multi core. It's, it's not even close. Yeah, I mean, do you really need to see this to know this? But even if you do something a little bit newer, like say an 8700K, which is still a good CPU. You don't have to get rid of it. But if you're tired of six cores, if you're tired of the limitations. That's still impressive. It really is an impressive bump. It's not double outright in the single core performance, but it's close and it's triple the multi-core performance. Given that games today use more cores than ever before, especially Call of Duty, Battlefield, Fortnite, you know, when Fortnite first came out, it ran on four cores without complaint. It wouldn't use eight cores. Today, Fortnite will use everything you can throw at it. It's been updated so much. It's on Unreal Engine 5 now. They've added ray tracing, which you can turn off and put in performance mode, but it really will use a lot more than it used to. Mm -hmm. So that's not bad. Here's the fun part. 
If somebody watching does have an 8700K, their existing motherboard and CPU retains value. You can probably sell the 8700K and board for like 200, 250. You can make this upgrade for under 200 bucks. You could triple your overall performance for 200 bucks. I guess Mark should triple his performance. That, that's not bad. So, but this option right here is ideal for people who are on a tight budget. Every dollar counts. I respect that. And you want a boost in performance to an older machine, but you just don't have the bucks to buy the premium option. And there's no crime in that. We're going to cover the second option here in a second. But before we do that... We got a few super chats. We have a few super chats. And, we got and I want to give lovely Rogue an opportunity to get a word in edgewise and give her thoughts. My thoughts? Yes. You said it all. The other problem is, is there's nothing left to say because he says it all. <laughs> I don't say everything. Mostly. Mostly. 99.9%. .9%. Do you have anything to add or expand on what I said? Well, I guess my question is, why wouldn't you? At this price, if you have something that's more than five years old yeah, and why, you actually use your computer on a regular yeah, why, basis... Why wouldn't you spend some money to make it better? I guess that's my question. I guess some people just... <sighs> I mean, truly old stuff isn't really worth anything anymore. An, an i7 2600K, a, an FX8300, I mean, those CPUs are worth... 30, 40 bucks. But a 7700K is worth 100, and 8700K is probably worth 150. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's still some value on those. If you keep those another two, three years, they won't be worth anything. Correct. So. It's also a good opportunity if somebody has something from the past, you know, five, six years, and maybe they've had some issues with it, a flaky motherboard. They're not sure about the RAM quality and they've, they've kind of had a fussy system and they're kind of ready for a restart. They're like, you know what? New RAM, new motherboard, new CPU replaces the most difficult yeah. components. See, Ranger, he had a 3900X and a 2080 Ti and built a new 13700, gained a 7900 XT. Wee! Wee! Exactly. See, why, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you want the Wii? Wii! Now, I would not upgrade a 3900X to what we just showed you. I would go to the 14700K, which we'll talk about in a minute. But right. yeah, he went to a 13, so... Yeah, yeah, that's good. That still works. Still gives him the Wii factor. Wow, look at Logan's comment. I wouldn't pay 40 bucks for an entire computer that has an 8350 in it full stop. Yeah, there you go. I actually got asked today or on um, a comment beneath one of our old YouTube videos. I did the... Uh, uh, a full build video, which used to be a member exclusive, although it's public now. Let me, um, this wasn't very long ago. Oh, you can find this one lickety split. AMD Athlon X4 860K PC build. What's a good GPU to pair with an 860K? <laughs> These, like this is 16 minutes ago. I have this exact build in my closet. And I want to send it off to someone that may want to play Roblox. And so my response was... Is recycling too harsh of a suggestion? Yee. If you had to guess, oh, just for fun... Just for giggles. Oh, it's in there. It, it's barely in there. It's an Athlon 2. X4. So go. for those of you curious, here's here's the CPU being asked about. An Athlon 2 X4 860K. It has four cores and four threads. Clocks up to 4 gigahertz and was released in 2014, so it's 10 years old. It is 10 years Shouldn't old. Shouldn't be too bad, right? It was deeply budget 10 four years ago. Oh, it doesn't even have hyper-threading. No, it does not. Four cores and four threads. Four gigahertz. Two memory channels. Oh my goodness, not even bulldozer. So, if you had to guess, how well do you think this thing, it's a DDR3 based system, oh, yeah. as they mostly were back then. Let me, I'm gonna save everybody. Ah, here we go. <laughs> 
Single core performance, 30%. Multi core performance, <laughs> 10%. Less than. I'm not getting out of bed. This is for less than 10%. That's <laughs> all I can think of. The shark tank. Okay, Mrs. Wonderful. Yeah. This is. I'm sorry that 30% is being generous. I, I think I so. I built the system. They no. put it right on the line, too. It's. There is no. Like no. Milk, milk with bowl added. It's <laughs> no. Oh my gosh. Uh, no, that's just. It's not. Don't send that to anybody. That recycle the bloody thing. It's yeah, no, 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 no. I mean, I, okay. So the benchmark says. I built that machine. It was awful six years ago. Then, I know. Yes. Sure. Okay. All right. Um. So, needless to say, if somebody watching has one of those, this is absolutely a very reasonable upgrade. Now, the question is, if you built or have that kind of machine from 10 years ago, is the rest of your computer worth keeping? Depends on your video card, depends on your power supply. Wow. You know, every situation is going to be different, but I just had to show that because... Looking for a Windows 10 or 11 product key, but you don't want to spend $100 to $200 for it? Our sponsor, URCD Keys, provides discounted Windows keys at amazing prices. $15 for Windows 10 Professional, $21 for Windows 11 Professional, and just $60 for Microsoft Office 2021 Professional Plus. These product keys are the real deal. They activate directly with Microsoft Online, link to your Microsoft account, and they work forever. For Windows, you simply go to Settings, Update and Security, Activation, click Change Product Key, paste the key provided by URCD Keys, and in seconds, you're activated with Microsoft. For Office, go to setup.office.com, sign in with your Microsoft account, paste the product key provided by URCD Keys, and then download Office 2021 Pro Plus directly from Microsoft. Remember to use the discount code TD20 to save 25% off the already deeply discounted prices and support our channel at the same time. We have been using product keys from URCD Keys for almost five years now without any issues and encourage you to do so as well. Okay. So very quick recap, 400 bucks, $200 for the 12700KF, $100 for a very nice motherboard, and $100 for 32 gigs of RAM. If you have the money, however, it is worth it because you will get longevity. $850 is more than twice the money of $400. I get it. But do you want to upgrade in two or three years or do you want to upgrade in four or five years? Pushing your upgrade out, having a more premium experience is worth something. Chip resale value in three, four, five years will be higher if you buy something nicer. I'm not saying it's cheaper. I'm saying it's not as expensive as it seems. If you spend twice the money and you get some of it back later and you extend your upgrade time out, you gain the benefit of your monthly cost of ownership being lower. How much that will be will vary, but it won't be twice the price. And so I bring you to the i7-14700K, 20 cores, 8P, 12E, higher clock speeds, increased cash, better overall performance. It's also twice the price. But again, in three years, a 14700K will be worth more than a 12700KF. It does have integrated graphics, which are nice. Some of you care, some of you don't, but that is definitely very nice. But if you're gonna go this route and spend $400 on a CPU, buy a nice motherboard. This is an ASUS Tough Gaming Z790 Plus Wi-Fi board. It's got four M.2 slots. It's got 16 phase power delivery. It's got USB 4. It is a far superior board to the 100R board. It's twice the price at 230. But again, if you're spending 400 on a CPU, this should not hurt you. You don't need to spend any more than this. It's a really nice board. It comes with Wi-Fi too, if you care. And then we have 64 gigs of RAM because you're buying a four to five year machine and you will absolutely want to have 64 gigs at some point. It's $220. It's DDR5 6400CL32. So the latency is lower and the clock speed is higher than the previous RAM. You don't want to go mixing RAM. If you're buying a machine for four to five years, buy all the RAM you need now. Otherwise, two or three years from now, you're gonna be asking me a question in a super chat going, I have 32 gigs of RAM now. 
Can I add two more sticks or do I have to replace it? Well, you could try. Is it gonna be the exact same chips? If you buy the same make and model, is it actually gonna be the same chips inside? No, because they'll be made at least two years apart. They'll be revised versions. They might work, they might not. It might be stable, it might not. Just buy the 64 now. Yeah. This is $850, but again, five years versus three years, if you divide it out, it's not quite as much money on a per month basis and it will retain more of its value. It's not cheaper, but you do gain a benefit. Because I know somebody's gonna say, but, but tech, I could buy the 450 option now and just upgrade later. No, you can't. Your RAM will be wrong and your motherboard will be wrong. This does not invalidate the $400 option. Again, as I said at the beginning of the video, people who have older machines, 13-year-old uh, Sandy Bridge, FX8300s, you don't have a lot of money, every penny counts, there is nothing wrong with the 12700KF. However, the 14700K is the faster superior option. It will age more gracefully, it'll retain more value, and with 64 gigs of RAM, and a very nice motherboard, it will be a better overall experience, but it is the premium option, and no, not all of you need it. And I didn't have it pulled up, but I'm gonna pull it up now for CPU Monkey. CPU Monkey? 12700KF versus 14700K. So these were released two years apart, of course, 14700K is a refresh, but it does have four more cores than the 13700K. It is Raptor Lake refresh architecture versus Alder Lake. They are in fact different chips. And if we come down here to cores, you see 12 cores versus 20, 20 threads versus 28 threads. And you'll notice Golden Cove cores versus Raptor Cove cores. The actual micro architecture of the P cores did change. The clock speed changed as well, but the main thing is the actual architecture. Latency improved and some other things. No integrated graphics on the 200R chip. You have integrated graphics. Maybe you care, maybe you don't, but it's there if you do. Again, integrated graphics. RAM support's a little bit different, but what I want you to look at is cache. How much does everybody scream about, oh my gosh, the cache on the 3D chips from AMD is amazing. Oh look, game performance is improved with more cash. Mm -hmm. A lot? Yeah. Okay. The 12700KF has a grand total of 12 megabytes of L2 cache. The 14700K has 28. Mm -hmm. The L3 cache goes from 25 to 33. Now this is not X3D levels of improvement, but it's almost twice the cache. It's like 65% more cache. Yep. This cache combined with the revised cores yeah. means that there are improvements beyond just more cores and improvements beyond just more clock speed. So it's a clock speed improvement, a core improvement, a cache improvement, and a microarchitecture improvement. If you have the $850, you will get your value out of it over time. If you don't, it's not a crime. Maybe you can upgrade it in the future. You'll have a cheap board and less RAM, but you can. So in terms of performance, single core, the raw benchmarks don't show a huge difference. It's about 85 to 87% of the performance of the in the single core and just over half the performance in multi-core. Having said that, our live streaming computer is a 12700K. Mm -hmm. We have Raptor Lake chips in other machines. There's a difference. Even in Chrome, even in installing and running programs. It's not huge, but it exists. Yeah, you can see it. All I can say is this. If budget isn't a constraint, get the 14th gen. And if budget is a constraint, well, it's easy to say buy the best. But again, if you're on a five, seven, nine, or 13 year old platform, the 12700KF will blow your mind. It's gonna be a wee. It will be a wee moment out the wazoo. You will be like, what have I been waiting for? I know there's no AMD option here, but I will remind all of you, Zen 5's coming this summer. If any of you wanna wait for that before you make a decision, that's fine. Mm -hmm. The only issue is, 
this stops being an option because the next generation from Intel comes in October. And so if we get to July, and then you're saying, should I buy Zen 5 now or should I wait for Intel? Well, okay, then, then Intel will be a few months away. Exactly. But then the Intel chip launches and then something new from AMD will be a few months away. So um, at some point, you just got to buy something. Yeah, you do. Get on the cycle and go with it. <sighs> you know, this comment here, the 9900K is still a great chip. I said this before. I will say it again. Most of you with a 9900K do not need an upgrade. If you have a 2080 Ti, even all the way I would say up to maybe a 3090, although a 3090 is a lot for that, but you can, depending on your monitor, 3090, or a 4070 Super. Yep. I replaced my 9900K with a 7800X. Why? Because I'm a tech YouTuber and because I'm a premium kind of guy and I like premium levels of performance. Do I notice the difference? Yes. Am I able to multitask better? Yes. Could I have kept my old chip? Yes. It was a lot of money to spend for a convenience upgrade. I didn't need it, I wanted it. Most people should stay with an i900K. Just like a 5700X. Most yeah. people, with if you've got an AM4 platform, despite all this Intel talk, go buy a 5700X and be happy. Whether you have a... Actually, you know what? I just... I responded to somebody who actually asked that question. Just today. Oh, yeah. Awesome guy. If you do that the, to the 4900K, yeah, you'll be like... I should have done this a year ago. Here you go. Oh, I need to upgrade my 16 AF and 5500 XT with a max budget of 600 for 1080p gaming. I've got a 6, 650 watt power supply playing um, World of Warcraft. Um, what's Ellie? I don't know. Ellie and Poe. What is Poe? All I can think of is Poe from Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> 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 I don't know what Poe is. Here was my advice. What do you think? $400 buys a 5700X and a 6700XT used from eBay. Both would be most upgrades for that. Yeah? If you upgraded, in fact, just to, just to make that point, 1600 AF to a 5700X. I actually saw a 5700X for sale on eBay the other day for 140 shipped. Come on. Path of Exile. That is so freaking cheap. Path of it. Okay. Thank you. 1600 AF, 5700X. Single core, it's almost double the performance. Multi-core, it's absolutely double the performance. You can buy a 5700AX for 150 or less off of eBay. The 1600 AF, you probably can't sell for more than 50 bucks. Yeah. So you're talking about a hundred dollar upgrade. For a hundred bucks, you double your performance outright. Yep. That's Why would you not do that? That's, that's what I said. Why wouldn't you? You should. I know. Nobody watching us right now should be running a Zen 1, Zen Plus, or honestly, even a Zen 2. These things have gotten cheap enough. It's a five-minute drop and upgrade. You don't have to change anything else. That is the biggest... Come on, audience. That is the biggest no-brainer $100 <laughs> upgrade in the history of $100 upgrades. Exactly. Is it not? So I do love AMD, yeah. just not AM5 at the moment because we're in between product cycles and Zen 5's coming. Correct. Come this summer, I'm sure we'll be talking about it and I look forward to seeing it. Yeah, it'll, it'll come.